Days Payable Outstanding, referred to as DPO, is an accounting term that reflects how long a company takes to pay its bills. It is calculated from figures on the financial statements, so everybody can calculate it for, its, for themselves. In this episode, we'll look at how to calculate it, as well as how to increase or decrease it. Make sure to stick around till until the end when we explain how one tactic you might use in another area of your accounts payable operation might imp impact your day's payable outstanding, and it might not be in line with management's objectives. Hey guys, I'm Mary Schaefer, founder of AP Now, the place where we curate the latest business intelligence for those who work in, manage, or have responsibility for the accounts payable function. All right, now let's take a look at the uh, ca calculation, how you calculate D uh, DPO. It can be calculated, by the way, on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis, but typically it's done off the annual financial statements. DPO is calculated by taking the accounts payable figure at the end of the period, multiplying it by the number of days in the period, and then dividing it by the cost of goods sold. The accounts payable figure represents purchases that are made on credit that are due to suppliers. The resulting number represents the number of days that it takes an organization to pay its bills. As we said earlier, these numbers are readily available to anyone who gets a copy of your organization's financial statements. And for public companies, this basically means anyone since they are uh, uh, available to all. Now, Many organizations will clean up their balance sheets at the end of the fiscal year and sometimes also at the end of the quarter, but definitely at the end of the fiscal year, um, in many, many organizations, management takes a look at where the numbers are and um, especially the DPO, if, uh, especially if you're borrowing money. Um, so this can mean a variety of things, cleaning up the financial statements, but typically it usually includes analysis of DPO and it may result in your organization deciding to pay bills, sometimes even early if, the early, if the company wants to present a really good picture to investors, lenders, and, and shareholders. So yes, there sometimes is a little bit of game playing at the end of the fiscal year end, although this is not what executives um, would call it. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as window dressing also. And herein lies in uh, the dilemma for many organizations. They want to hold on to their money as long as they can, um, sometimes even string some of their supply, suppliers out longer than they should. Yet, they need to face the uncomfortable reality that if they string out their suppliers for too long, their DPO figures may soar, and it may look like the company is experiencing financial difficulties, even though that is not really the, the case. Now, before we discuss how you might increase your DPO uh, within acceptable limits, if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. And if you loved it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We produce new content for this channel three times a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays are devoted to payments and accounts payable issues, and Saturdays are reserved for Wordle. Now, I said that you can you can sometimes increase or de decrease your DPO depending upon um, a variety of things. You can, for starters, um, you can unilaterally increase, or for that matter, decrease your payment terms by simply uh, addressing payment terms. So, for example, you can say that, okay, we're now going to pay all our bills in 35 days instead of the 30 days, the net 30 terms that we have agreed to with our um, uh, suppliers. Um, alternatively, you could decrease um, the number of days that you were paying, um, but that would have the result opposite. So let me give you an example. Um, you could, um, if you were, for example, doing payment runs once a week, you could go to doing payment runs twice a month. So instead of paying every seven, uh, every seven days, you'd be paying every 14 days. And in effect, what that would do would be it would increase your DPO by three and a half days. Basically, whatever period you increase, it'll, you'll get a, a half day. Uh, a half of that will be the increase when you're increasing payment terms. Okay, now, 
Um, there is one instance where you may unintentionally increase your DPO, even though that was not what you set out to do. Many organizations now are trying to encourage suppliers to accept ACH payments. And one of the ways that they go about encouraging their suppliers, if you will, to start accepting ACH payments is by reducing the number of check runs while um, keeping the same the number of ACH runs or maybe even increasing it. So going back to my example that I was discussing earlier, if you were doing a payment run once a week, you may now continue to do your ACH runs once a week, but your check runs do once every two weeks, okay? Um, and those suppliers who will who still insist on getting that paper checked will have their payment terms increased. And this, as I said, may have the unintended impact of increasing your DPO when that wasn't what you set out to do, or you may not care, or in some cases, companies will look at it as a, you know, an unintended bonus. It just depends upon how you're going about managing your cash. Now, DPO isn't the only way your accounts payable impacts the bottom line. The same can be said about early payment discounts. We really, we recently did a video on early payment discounts, which you can watch right now using the link that will appear momentarily on YouTube and is in the show notes below. As always, we appreciate your thumbs up, your subscribes, your shares, and your comments. Good luck.